All right, so we're going to continue with debunking Calvinism, and this is an important one. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. I'll read through verses 9 through 12 to kind of get the whole gist here of the passage. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Okay, so we're basically going to be looking at verse 11 here, which says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. We're going to be particularly looking at this part which says, Who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now this Calvinists will use as a proof text for their belief in determinism, that God has determined all things, that uh, God decrees everything that happens. Everything is because God has willed it, even sin. Even when people sacrifice their children in the flames to Molech, they would say that God has willed that. They would say that all things are after the counsel of his will. And so therefore all things includes people sacrificing the children to Moloch. Which obviously is an absurd idea, okay, and it's a very wicked. Um, so it's this wicked idea that, that God has determined everything, okay, even sin, even evil. And so some Calvinists will resort to a distinction between God's effectious decree and his permissive decree. But the result is the same, still having God ordaining sin. And so I want to look at some verses that will refute this false interpretation that Calvinists apply to this text. And then I want to give you the correct interpretation of this verse. So first of all, as I said, I'll repeat again, that Calvinists teach that from this verse, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, that it is saying that all things are after the counsel of his own will. Therefore, God has decreed that all things happen, even sin. Well, let's look that, let's see that God has not ordained everything. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 5. Okay. Go to Jeremiah, verse 19. Or chapter 19, verse 5, sorry. Chapter 19, verse 5 says, They have built also the high places of Baal, or Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. God speaking here. Neither came it into my mind that these people are sacrificing their sons to fire. Now I just said that the Calvinists would use Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 to say that God did decree that that happens, but here God says that he didn't command it, he didn't speak it, and neither came into his mind. Now if it didn't come into his mind for these people to do these things, then obviously he didn't preordain it. Okay, he didn't foreordain it. He didn't decree for this to happen. And it's absolutely foolish to even think so. Now, I want to show you also a couple instances in the Bible where chance is mentioned. Now, if determinism is true and God has decreed everything, then there is no room for chance. But we do see it in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 6. Deuteronomy 22, verse 6. Okay. A little bit further. Deuteronomy 2, 22, verse 6 says, If a bird's nest chance to be before thee, 
in the way, in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take of the dam with the young. So anyways, we see a chance there. If a, bird's if a bird's nest chanced to be before thee, but if God determined everything, there's no such thing as chance, God would have determined that the bird's nest be there or not be there. And let's look at Luke in the New Testament, chapter 10, verse 31. Oh, too far. Luke 10:31. Luke 10, 31 says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on, by on the other side. By chance there came down a certain priest. Okay, no such thing as chance, again, if the Calvinist interpretation of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 is true. Now, I also want to mention that sometimes you, know, you may come across certain verses where there seems to be contradictions or there seems to be where God did cause things to happen in which he may have only permitted or allowed things to happen. Okay, such as in Job, you know, we see that Satan does things to Job and then there are passages or verses where maybe these things are attributed to God. And that's because God permitted these things to happen, not because God caused them to happen. And you need to know that there's a huge difference between God causing or determining something to happen and God allowing or permitting something to happen. Okay, And we, we still have questions, why does God or allow or permit certain things to happen that we don't have the answers for? But the more important thing to know is that Calvinism is false. The interpretation of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 is false. And uh, God has not determined everything, including sin. That's absolutely wicked. So, God is holy. We know that about God. To the thought of God ordaining sin is far from him. And so, you need to know that this interpretation of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, the Calvinist interpretation that God has determined all things, including sin, it destroys man's free will, which is obvious. Calvinists reject the idea that man has free will. It destroys man's responsibility. It destroys evangelism. There's no reason to evangelize. It destroys prayer. There's no reason to pray to God. And, uh, you know, or we shouldn't expect anything to happen from prayer. And many other things. Okay, it just makes uh, the Bible foolish and it's a mockery. So let's get down to the correct interpretation of Ephesians chapter 11, or chapter 1, verse 11. <laughs> okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 says, again, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And so a Calvinist reads this as all things are worked after the counsel of God's will. So everything happens according to God's will. Rape, incest, murder, so on and so on. Everything that has ever happened or that ever will happen is according to God's will. That is false. What is being talked about here in this passage? Well, the main we need to look at the context, and that's what Calvinists and, and, and everybody's going to get wrong on any kind of false teaching is they're not getting the context right here. What is the context of this verse? The context is obtaining an inheritance. We see at the beginning there in chapter 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being pre predestinated according to the purpose of him. Okay, predestinated in what? To obtaining the inheritance. Who? Those who have trusted in Christ. We see in verse 12, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Those who first trusted in Christ are predestinated to obtain an inheritance. And this is according to the will of God. Specifically. And so, I would say to you that the correct way to read this verse, to understand it, is that Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, is that 
all things after the counsel of his own will are worked by him. And so therefore, those who have trusted in Christ, being predestinated to obtaining the inheritance, that is according to his will, and so therefore it is worked by him. So that is, so therefore that whatever God wills, he's going to accomplish. Okay, It is him who worketh this, that whoever trusts in Christ obtains the inheritance. They're predestinated to it. Because God has willed it, and he works it. It's by his power. Okay, So do you see the difference there in reading? How, how reading this verse can make the difference here? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. So that him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So all things that are after the counsel of his own will, he worketh. It's not that all things, everything that ever happened or ever will happen, is according to, his God, according to God's will, including sin. That's the wrong interpretation of this verse. So I hope that you can see that. I don't know how else to really explain it. Um, just know that all things that are according to his counsel or his will are worked by him. Whatever he wills, he will accomplish. That does not mean that God has willed all things, that God wills everything. It's all things that he wills, he will work. That's how it is. So, um, you know, Calvinism is very wicked, and you know, this is at the core of Calvinism. And if you understand this verse as I've taught it, then you'll see that Calvinism is done. Okay, I've already refuted multiple important verses, you know, any one of those that once you understand that the Calvinist interpretation is wrong, Calvinism is done. This is very wicked, making God the author of sin, having God ordain sin. It's against the nature of God, the character of God. And, uh, you know, it makes the gospel pointless and everything else. So <laughs> uh, Calvinism is very, very wrong, and that's why I think it's very important to be debunked. And uh, I'm going to end this video now. Just uh, look over those verses that I gave you. Let me know what you think about it. Thanks for watching. God bless.